Martin Ford, Casey, welcome to Thank LBC. Um, I want to get stuck straight in to some of the evidence that you examined along with your panel um, when it when when you started um, uh, your the work behind your report. Um, but before I, I do that, I want you just to very quickly set the scene for me. Why were you invited to chair a panel? Um, a, a, and what were the specific things that you were looking at? Um, I was invited to chair a panel as an independent lawyer along with three Labour Party peers because uh, a number of WhatsApp messages had inadvertently been dumped on the Labour Party server, which revealed uh, some disturbing attitudes to, among other things, um, anti-Semitism. And the product of the WhatsApp messages, among other things, had formed a leaked report which ran to some 860 pages, which was put uh, on the World Wide Web. Uh, and I think my primary task was to try and find out who had leaked the report, because it was leaked very shortly after Keir Starmer mm. was appointed leader of the opposition. And it was thought to have been leaked by those who supported Jeremy Corbyn to undermine the position and to demonstrate that the anti-Semitism which uh, was complained about within the party under Jeremy Corbyn was not as significant as the right-wing press and the right of the party were suggesting. Uh, and, of course, those on, on the right of the party were saying it was not being dealt with efficiently and um, that was because there was uh, anti-Semitism on the left. And, and what we found, in essence, was a disciplinary... Um, system that just wasn't fit for purpose huge backlogs mm. seem to be more fast tracking of complaints in relation to anti-semitism and misogyny than um, anti-black or anti-muslim um, uh, racism or other protected characteristics we called for submissions from labor party members we got 1100 and they didn't just touch on anti-Semitism, but what they revealed, and I thought it was important that the party knew this, as did the peers, I have to emphasise, we agonised over every line of this report and we reached a consensus. There was a disturbing amount of complaints of uh, racism other than anti-Semitism within the party and misogyny. And in the report, um, Allegation 6 actually deals and, and, and picks up quotes from party members who feel they were subjected to ill-informed, hurtful comments or actions. So I did a very interesting interview with, with uh, Mike Hatz from Jewish Labour Movement, who, yep. who you all know. And um, he was really confident that when it comes to dealing with anti-Semitism within Labour, that the process had become... Um, much more robust. He said, look, uh, I'm sure that those things can still be improved, but he has a huge amount of faith in it. Nevertheless, there has still been a real persistent sense that I had picked up from my listeners mm -hmm. um, that when it comes to racism outside anti-Semitism, Labour still isn't getting it right. I was looking back at your report, and um, which was published in 2022, and it found that senior officials in Labour had shared messages about Diane Abbott in WhatsApp groups. Um, and I'm going to, to read some of those remarks. Um, it was found that they had, had said that Diane Abbott, quote, literally makes me sick and is, quote, truly repulsive. There were, as I understand it, other things written about her what was your conclusion about those remarks? Could they be characterised as racist or were they just rude or offensive? Well, <clears throat> again, we really had to look at the kind of, you know, the banter defence because people will say unguarded things in WhatsApp groups. They might not say to somebody's face. But I, as a lawyer, I'm actually very impressed and place huge evidential weight upon what people say in a private setting. Uh, to like-minded people, because I think that's when the truth comes out. And we describe the attitude towards uh, Diane Abbott, whatever you might think of her politics or her competence, uh, as exhibiting what, what we described as visceral disgust. And it was clearly racist. We said that, that you know, we didn't see any evidence of uh, you know, white male politicians being described in that way. And 
I think to this day, and I'm happy to be corrected, um, she's yet to receive an apology from the party uh, for those messages, which I, I have to say I find uh, quite astonishing. Given your experience, what, what do you make of that? Well, I think it shows that there um, may be marginalisation of certain people with certain views. So one of the issues for us was that we were, it was being suggested to us that if you were close to the then leader, Mr Corbyn, and you um, said something uh, which was anti-Semitic, that there was uh, less enthusiasm to pursue you. And one of the cases that was cited was the Ken Livingstone case when I think you'll remember he said appallingly he he related uh, Hitler I think to Zionism and that took about two years to be dealt with and it was suggested that if you were from the right of the party when the party was perceived as more left leaning then you you might be disciplined more quickly now the complaint is that if you are either identifying with Jeremy Corbyn as Diane Abbott very strongly is, mm. or seem to be on the left of the party, you will receive harsher uh, punishment, uh, longer durations of suspension than if you are seen as politically more aligned with the current leadership. Now, it's very, very difficult for me to give a quantitative assessment of that, which is why I very carefully said this is the perception. But we thought it was something that the party needed to be aware of because they position themselves as being diverse and inclusive. Uh, and you'd therefore expect them to have the best policies and to be in the vanguard of change. Um, I'm very surprised that um, our Prime Minister gets away with saying, look at how diverse our cabinets are, because certainly I, I don't know many people who think some of his diverse cabinet members, who are interestingly enough, appear to be mainly on the right, even of the right of the Tory mm. party, Uh, who talk about British values and talk about hate marches uh, and um, have said on record that West Africans were middle class, West Indians just came to drive the buses, which I found personally very insulting. They don't speak for me, these people. They don't have my lived experience. I think what makes uh, them homogenous with the, the rest of the party on the whole is their extreme wealth. And therefore you would expect them to... Um, be members of a party which historically has favoured the wealth creators. Whatever you might think of Mm. capitalism, the argument is, isn't it? You create wealth, you create jobs. Capitalism is a great thing. So, you know, when you've got multimillionaires who happen to be people of colour, many of whom were privately educated, that is not the lived experience of the people they claim to represent.